Hey guys, welcome to Big Dell's Tips on FBC. And what a round 23 we had. There were some close games, there was some flogging, but more importantly, there was some absolutely cracking games. The powerhouses of the competition, the Melbourne Storm. They just keep powering on. And what about the Panthers against the Bunnies? The Bunnies 12-0, and what happens? 25 unanswered points on the back of Nathan Cleary. Nathan Cleary, you're a genius, son. Look, let me take you back to Thursday night. Thursday night, the Titans up against the Storm. The Titans, they needed to test themselves against the heavyweights. They couldn't get the job done. 34 to 20, the Storm get home. The Storm, what a side. It's a culture that keeps on keeping on. But this game on Friday night, the Raiders, 18, versus the Seagulls, 19. No Tommy Trevojevic. The Raiders got out to a 12-0 lead on the back of guys like Jordan Rapinar. And I'm not sure why, but Ricky Stewart, in about the 60th minute, replaced Jordan Rapinar with Nickel Cookstar. I'm not sure why Ricky would do that. Jordan Rapinar has been an absolute weapon. They end up losing the game, 19-18. DCE, clutch field goal. He gets the job done. The Raiders score a try at the death, but too little, too late. And what about the Panthers versus the Bunnies? When we talk about the heavyweights of the competition, you've got the Storm. Everybody is gunning for the Storm. They're going to win the minor premiership, we know that. But these two teams are the teams that I think they can knock them off at the right time of the season. In the grand final or in the playoffs? The Panthers, they started off slow. 12-0, they were down. The Rabbitohs go bang, bang, bang. Couple of tries. They're powerful through the middle third. And then they make a couple of changes. Big kick out comes on. Obviously, Tavita Pangai Jr., he comes on. Two powerhouses that change up the dynamic of the game. And then what happens? 25 unanswered points. That's right. On the back of Nathan Cleary, Nathan Cleary, what a masterclass. So the Bunnies, there's still a few question marks in the Bunnies. I still think at the right time, right place, they can win the competition. But the Panthers, they're motoring along just nicely. And oh, West Tigers and Sharks. Well, I tip the Sharks to win this. The Sharks, 50 points to 20 against the Tigers. The Tigers, I'm not sure what they're doing. Just when you think the Tigers could probably do something, they don't do anything. Uh, young Mortalo, unfortunately he, uh, he broke his jaw, so he's gone for the season. And then we look at that game, the Bulldogs versus the Knights. The Knights didn't have it their own way, but the Knights got home here, 22 to 16. The Dogs, they're just missing that class. Six points, they're in the game, they just couldn't finish the Knights off. On the back of guys like Ponger and that, they get the job done. And ha, oh, what about the Paramount Reels? The Eels, they haven't had a win for four or five weeks. Oh, actually, sorry. They did have a win against the Cowboys. They haven't won for nine or ten weeks or something like that. So the Cowboys are under the pump. They pushed them, but the Parramatta Reels, they got home 32 to 16, but I think they're gone. I think they're in fifth or sixth position now. They can't finish in the top four. They won't finish in the top four, and I just don't think they've got enough power um, to go with the real good sides of the competition. Uh, in Toowoomba, the Roosters, they did the job against uh, the Dragons. The Dragons, it's a mental block with them. They, they got in front, and then all of a sudden, the Roosters just piled tries on them. Young Sam Walker, young Sam Walker, what a good young player. Comes off the bench, he carves them up through the middle third. So, 40-22 to 22 to the Roosters. The Roosters are consolidating their top four spot. I just can't believe what a great culture uh, the Roosters are. They've had like, you know, seven or eight injuries. Obviously, some players retired, but they keep on keeping on. And last but not least, my Broncos. That's right, 24-22. to 22. This game went down to the wire. In the left-hand corner, it should not have been a try to Ewan Aitken. I think Xavier Coates, he got his hand there first. It went upstairs, there's no try. And for some reason, the referee awarded the try. But anyway, you know what? Reese Walsh had a chance to tie it up, and he misses the goal. And you know what that is? That's footy gods, and that's karma. So well done to my Broncos. The Broncos, 24 to 22. And that was a very exciting round 23. Hey guys, let's start off with round 24, and what a game we have for you. The Knights versus the Titans. The Titans now have lost touch with the top eight. I think they're four points out of the top eight, but they need to beat the Knights. They need to win the next two games to be in the mix. And look, for me, um, they're a chance of winning this game, but on the back of the Ford Pack Newcastle showed last week, they're strong through their middle. We know they're strong through the middle, but I think for me, it's their backs who probably haven't been as good as they should be. So if their backs can fire, um, I reckon they could do a real good job on uh, the Titans outside backs. But Caelan Ponger at the back, uh, you know, we know he's a wonderful player, but Kurt Mann uh, and Bradman Best, that centre combination, I think it's a really good centre combination, and I can see these halves are starting to put it together. Young Jay Clifford, he had his best game last week. 
I think in the post-match interviews, I think he got interviewed, and I think a few of the senior players were going, Jake looks um, very comfortable now, as we knew, well, as we know, six weeks ago, he, he moved from uh, the Cowboys, which is not easy, but to get that side around with Mitchell Pearce and Kalen Ponga, and obviously young Jaden Braley, that spine is so important to Newcastle Knights. They get that right, that's when they play that expansive style of football. The Titans, they play a similar style of football, but they're not that aggressive through their middle third. I know they've got great individual talent, uh, like Big Tino, for Usa Malaawi. Yeah, that's really a mouthful, so I really had to concentrate on that one. Um, Kevin Proctor there, and David Feeder off the bench. For Feeder, I think when you're a young player and you've played at such a level for so long, um, they're trying to rotate those bigger players like your, um, um, your kick outs, um, your Fafitas, um, Kavita Pangai Jr., and their backs. I think even though they've got a fast back line, the Titans, this is where I think Newcastle can get them. They can expose them in the backs because Tyrone Peachy, he's a good 5'8 um, in, in their centres and that. Herbert and Kelly are good players. Semi is very consistent. Young Jaden Campbell, uh, obviously Preston Campbell's young bloke, he's doing a wonderful job. But I reckon they just miss a little bit of class in the backs here. They miss a real big body there to finish him off. Bradman Best, I think, you know, they give him early ball. I think he can do a job there. But I like this game uh, through their middle third. Uh, that's where they need to dominate them, um, I think. If Titans are going to win, they've got to take it to this forward pack. Look at this forward pack. Saifidi, uh, Suaso Sue, Tyson Frizzell, Barnett, and Connor Watson... Uh, he plays more of a link sort of uh, player, which helps that expansive style of football. And that way, Caelan Pong can get two passes wide and do his magic. And the benches play such a big part. So I look at the benches, and then um, Fafita and big uh, Mo Fortawaka, who the Dragons are looking at signing. I think it'll be a great signing. Um, but they need to sort of watch that bench from the Titans, because that's when those players come on, that's when they give them um, that extra bit of sting. So for me, I look at the Knights here, I look at their bench, Josh King, um, Brody Jones, good player, Chris Randall's doing a really good job. Look, for me, I think the Titans can win this one. It's going to be a tight one. Titans are $1.85, uh, sorry, Titans $1.95, Newcastle $1.85. And it's at the Sunshine Coast, which is a great stadium. I played a lot of junior football up there with the Broncos 21s. I'm going in a close one, um, Newcastle Knights 1-12. Because Newcastle, they can have some lapses in defence, and so can the Titans. So it depends which Titans team comes out, but Newcastle got too much to play for. They want to try and get as high up that ladder as they can. So for me, the Newcastle Knights on the back of their Ford pack in that man, Callum Ponger and Mitchell Pearce. Well, guys, Friday night football, six o'clock game. The Raiders versus the Warriors. I'm so excited. You know why? My home ground. That's right. I can't wait for this. Mackay deserves games like this. I've had one just recently. It was Parramatta and the Roosters, and the Mackay fans turned out. I know they'll turn out in droves for this, and I can't wait. What about the talent on show here? Reese Walsh, Jordan Rapinar. Last week, Jordan Rapinar never should have been taken off. I'm not sure why Ricky took him off, but um, when he took him off, that changed the momentum of the game against Manly. But look at this Warriors side last week. Um, they're playing some really good football, but they just can't finish off games. Um, where I see this being won and lost, I see being won and lost in the backs. I think they're both outside backs are exciting backs. They play off the cuff. They don't play with a great deal of structure. And when you don't play with a great deal of structure, you get some magic tries. As soon as they make breaks and stuff, they're kicking it, they're flick passing it. So I look at that back line. Reese Walsh, you know, Hiku, um, Montoya, mate, he's a very strong player. He just needs to learn to get a bit more aggressive. Um, Chad Townsend, obviously their halfback, but their forward pack is very good. Fanua Blake, you know, Ewan Aiken's playing some really good football, but it's also their bench. Uh, Cody Nikarima, Bunty Afoa, one of the best names in football. Bunty Afoa, how good. And Jazz Tavanga. So against this Raiders side, this Raiders side, if they want to play finals football, they've got to win the next two games, and they've got to win them well to get into the top eight. Obviously, they're for and against. So Jordan Rappenau will lead from the back, but it's going to be up to Jack Whiten. Jack Whiten, he's the most important player in this team. If he goes forward and he's aggressive and he goes bang off that left foot and takes them on, they're going to be hard to stop. We know what Papali'i can do. We know what Hodgson can do and their back row. Young, whitehead, Sutton. A very good back row, but it depends how Ricky uses his bench this week. I see Charles Nickel Cookstad is on the bench this week. It depends where he brings him on. If I'm Ricky Stewart, I'm not bringing Jordan Rappenar off. He's got to stay on there because he's that point of difference. So if I have a look at the, uh, look at the margins here, the Raiders are $1.45, the Warriors $2.75. So where I'd be looking at this, 
I'd be looking at taking the Raiders with the six and a half start. Minus six and a half for dollar ninety. I reckon that's a safe bet. I reckon the Raiders will turn it on this week and they'll put the Warriors to the sword. The Viking way. That's how the Raiders do it. Oh, the second game on Friday, no, we know it's round 24. The Roosters versus the Rabbitohs. This game has always got something to it. There's always something missing or something that's a bit spicy. Uh, and we know the Book of Feuds, Russell Crowe lit that a long time ago, but they don't need Russell Crowe for this. The Roosters and the Rabbitohs, obviously around the same area, Botany, you know, Mascot, you know, uh, the Bondi, Coogee. Not my sort of areas, Bondi and Coogee, but I know a lot of people like that sort of thing. But um, the Roosters, still a very good side. They're playing some wonderful football at the moment. They're in the top four for a reason, because it's their culture. I think they might have six, seven injuries, a couple of retired players, but they keep finding a way to win. On the back of young kids like Sam Walker, who's starting this week, but when you've got Joe Weir at Hargraves, he's an absolute beast. When you've got someone like that, a big alpha male leading from the front, you're going to follow. And on the back of that, you've got guys like Tedesco. We talk about Tommy Turbo, we talk about what he can do, but watching what Tedesco did last week and what he's done all season, he finds a way to stay in the game. He doesn't mind travelling from left to right through the middle, second phase play, and he's hard to stop. So for me, um, the Rabbitohs too. The Rabbitohs playing some good football, but they got found out last week. Penrith scored 25 unanswered points. Unfortunately for them, the penalty count was 11-2 against them, so that certainly helped the Panthers. But what are this? The Roosters... In their 17, they've got seven players who have played less than 30 games. That's unheard of. So well done to those young players. They're stepping up at the moment, but I don't think they're going to be good enough to beat this Rabideau side. You know, Latrell Mitchell, Alex Johnson, who's scoring tries at will. I think he's scored 24, 25 tries. Um, the halves, they've been majestic this year. Adam Reynolds and that man Cody Walker. They have been absolutely crazy the way they played. Cody Walker's try assist is through the roof. And then you look at the Ford pack. Jaden Sewer, Cam Murray, and Thomas Burgess lead from the front. All, on, all, off the bench, you know, got guys like Jacob Host and Benji Marshall. Um, where I see this being won and lost, oh, look, I think the Bunnies are going to have a day out here. I know the Roosters, they're going to try hard. It's a local derby. Um, the Book of Feeds, everyone you want to call it. But I think the Roosters, they're giving 11 and a half start. Um, sorry, the Bunnies are giving 11 and a half start. I'm taking the Rabbitohs, 13 plus for $1.90. That's... Seems to be the best bet there. Um, or you can give 11 and a half start for $1.90. So either way, but I'm, I'm taking the 13 plus because I think Wayne Bennett, he'll be a bit dirty about last week. It's a mindset. They've got to get, I suppose, more, more ruthless is the word I want to use. If they get ruthless, um, they can put the roosters to the sword here. And I think we'll see the real bunnies here. The bunnies need to flex their muscle and flex it hard. Oh, here we go. The Dragons versus the Cowboys. Two teams that are close to my heart. Obviously, I'm a Red V man. And uh, obviously, North Queensland boys. So, look, the Cowboys haven't had a win in, I think, 10 or 11 weeks. Uh, this is very winnable for them. Uh, the Dragons, for some reason, I don't know. They just seem to be so hot and cold. But what I like about them now, they're putting some young players in there. Uh, young Tyrell Sloan, he's back at fullback. They've got to stick with these young blokes. Um, young uh, Amone, he's a very good young player. You know, fee guy. They're good young players. They've got to start to back their young talent consistently. Jaden Sullivan moves into number nine. He's a very good young uh, young player. Obviously played in the halves a lot for New South Wales and obviously um, representative sides. But it's their back row that's their experience. Obviously Tarek Sims and uh, that guy Jack DeBellin in front row, Josh McGuire. Look, I look at their bench. Freddie Lussick has switched over to the Dragons. Um, and Fumiano, he comes off the bench against the Cowboys side. The Cowboys. Hemiso is back from his injury, which is good. Valentine Holmes is going to play in the centres this week. So there's this pretty strong side there for the Cowboys. Their back line looks ultra quick, ultra fast. And you know what? Tal Malolo, he's back in the front row. That's what I want to see. And this week, Jake Granville off the bench this week. He's played fullback, centre. He's played in the halves. He's played at hooker. Where I see this game going, it's at Brown Park and Rockhampton. I played a bit of football there. Um, the Dragons... They are favourites at $1.65. The Cowboys, $2.25. Where I see this going, I see the Cowboys winning this game. The Cowboys, 1-12. The Cowboys have been in games, have been tight. The Dragons at the moment, I like the Dragons. I, I want them to win. But they keep letting me down. Um, and as much as I love the Red V to win, I think the Cowboys do for a win. So for me, I'm going the Cowboys, 1-12 in a tight one. Well, what a Saturday game we got for you here at 5.30. The Sharks versus the Broncos. 
was only last month that these two teams played, and the Broncos won in a tight one. I'm pretty sure the Broncos won. Yeah, they did. And look, look, the, the Sharks have got a lot to lose here because you know they're in that top eight. They need to keep winning. I think after last week, they put 50 points on the Tigers. The Tigers couldn't go with them. And it's through their middle third, their power game, which set the standard. But on the back of that, William Kennedy. I've seen a player called David Peachy. I played with David Peachy through, through my juniors. Uh, and I played against him um, uh, many a times. The way William Kennedy plays, he glides. He's got time on his side. Uh, his skill set is next level. So he's had a breakout season, this young man. And young Luke Metcalf, I thought he was outstanding last week. Uh, plenty of touches, great energy. I remember calling with Sturlow last week, and Sturlow was very impressed with this young kid, uh, Metcalf. But we know their Ford pack. That's where it's won and lost. Their Ford pack will set that standard. Toby Rudolph was playing some good football. Um, he's a character. I love him. Um, it's good to have characters in the game. Aaron Woods. Um, he hasn't got a club yet, but Aaron Woods is playing um, career best football at the moment. Uh, Talakai, he's an absolute beast. Um, started in the centres, I think, on the wing, but he's playing real direct, and he's, he's running some good angles. So he's playing well, and on the bench you've got guys like uh, Matt Moylan and uh, Ueli. So, mate, they've, they've got a good squad here, the Sharks. The Sharks have got to keep building for, towards the final eight, and they're in that final eight for a reason, against the Broncos. The Broncos, mate, they're a big chance of winning as well because, mate, They've got nothing to lose at the moment. They're starting to play some entertaining football, but what worries me about the Broncos is their defence. They go into their hole a little bit, they go into a bit of a lull, and that allows other teams to put points on them. So their forward pack is a very good forward pack. Uh, Alex Glenn, um, he's going to retire for this year. He's been an absolute warrior for the Broncos. Well done to him. Thomas Fleglison playing some really good football in there with Payne Huss, but their back line. Tessie New, um, New, he's a player that uh, of immense talent that's starting to understand what he can do at this level. I like what they're doing. Anthony Milford obviously is off contract. Um, he's playing some good football. It's funny. And I've been there. Once you're off contract or you're coming up you know, for renegotiation, um, you start to play your best football. It's like anything. It's like property. You want to show teams what you can do. So they've got a good bench there. TC, TC Rabati, um, he's going to give them some good impact. Danny Levy off the bench. Where I see this game being won and lost, um, obviously on the edge, on through their middle third, and I think both teams, that's where their power games are. But I think the Sharks will be too good through their middle third. Um, so I'm going the Sharks here. Uh, the Sharks off the bat are $1.50. The Broncos, uh, the Broncos are at $2.60. And don't forget, it's at Suncorp Stadium, so it's another Broncos home game. But the Sharks, they don't fear playing the Broncos um, home and away. The Sharks have got a good record against the Broncos. I'm going the Sharks in a tight one, 1-12. One and the Broncos will throw it around. We'll see a very exciting game. But the Sharkies, for me, will get the win. Well, guys, here we go. The storm in the eels. It wasn't that long ago, six weeks ago, that everyone kept talking about the eels. Are they the real deal? Can they win the premiership? And since then, they've had suspensions. Uh, they've had injuries. Mitchell Moses, obviously, after Origin, he hurt his back. Um, he, he'd been rested. And they just lost their way a little bit. So um, for me, you know, the storm, we know what the storm are doing. Um, the storm have got so much depth, so much talent, and they're a winning culture. You know, when you get play, put players on the bench like Harry Grant, who's probably, you know, there's a test match this year, he'd be Australian number nine, probably in front of, um, you know, Damian Cook would be fighting it out for that position. But Brandon Smith is playing great football. And I think I say it week in, week out, you know. Pappenhausen, you know, he's a fullback. Uh, he's doing a great job. Jerome Hughes comes back into the side. And what they'll do is they'll rotate players now. I think Craig Bellamy said um, this week that, you know, they arrest a few players. And it's funny, once you arrest a few players... And you've got players like uh, Kamakamitha. He's just a Fijian powerhouse. Um, you've got Marion Seve. You've got uh, Tepo Moroa. These sort of players who can come in um, outside the 17 into that squad. And then you rotate like Harry Grant, uh, Eisenhower, um, Nico Hines. It's a wonderful squad. And that all starts at the top. But I look at the Eels side. The Eels have got a lot to play for here. Because I think they've dropped down to sixth position. They're in the top four. But they've had, they've had a rotten five or six weeks with injuries. Clint Gutherson needs to lead the way from the back. I know it's easy to say lead the way from the back, but he sets the standard there. When he's, uh, when he's on with try assists, obviously, Sivo, one of their best players, he's gone for the season virtually. We won't see him. See him. So Blake Ferguson, obviously, back. Uh, Hayes Dunster's on the wing there. But this is where it's going to have to start. Their forward pack on the back of Papali'i and Junior Paulo, they've got to set the standard. They've got to match the Storm with their power. If they can match them with their power, they're a big chance uh, of causing an upset. They've got a really good back row, um, but also 
They've got um, a good bench. Bryce Cartwright there, Ray Stone. They've got to be better. Keegan Hipgrave has got to bring some energy. You've got to play with a lot of energy against the Melbourne Storm because if you don't, they'll put points on you. So Melbourne Storm, they're $1.10. The Eels, $7 to win. Uh, where I see this game, mate, I'm telling you now, they will, they will rest four or five players, uh, the Melbourne Storm. Um, but, you know, they've still got some pretty fair players. Cameron Munster, if he plays, he's playing you know, his best football and he wants to get a bit of crap out of his game, he said. So, you know, he's playing some great football. But look, for me, I'm taking the Parramatta Reels here with the 21.5 point start. You take a 21.5 point start at $1.90, you've got a long way of winning the game. Um, or, you know, as a betting game, this is good. I think the Storm will win still, um, even if they rest four or five players. But 21.5 start when Parramatta Reels are trying to catch it, recapture some form and also some respectability in the game. So the Storm will keep on keeping on, but Parramatta, Parramatta Reels with 21.5 points start for me. Yes, the Sunday game at Morton Daly Stadium. That's right, Redcliffe. Redcliffe, mate, what a great stadium. And I know they've got some money behind them. Uh, they've got some backers, and they're playing some really good football when the teams play there. So well done to the Redcliffe people there. Um, they've got a really nice golf course there too. I used to play there quite a bit. But like the Seagulls, how can you not back the Seagulls here? Tight win last week without their big gun, Tommy Turbo. They found a way to win without him. I think uh, their record... When he plays, the winning record's 70%. When he doesn't play, it's 30%. I wasn't great at mass, but that makes sense to me. Um, for me, Ruben Garrick is having a, a tremendous season. He's scoring plenty of points. I don't think he's going to break any records uh, in the competition, but well done to him. Uh, Ola Katow, he is playing some wonderful football on the edge. He's an absolute beast. Mate, he's strong. I love the Polynesian flavour through the rugby league. Now, I think the rugby league... I think it's 55% uh, the Polynesian players and the Island players. So well done to the boys and well done to the culture of uh, the NRL. But also, let's put some money back in the Pacific Islands. You know, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, all these places. Um, I look at that Seagull side. Um, they're going to be hard to stop. Schuster's playing some really good football uh, in the manly back row there. Um, but then I have a look at the Bulldogs. Bulldogs, they're trying hard but they just can't seem to get it done. Jack Hetherington returns there. Um, he spent quite a few weeks uh, on the sideline. He plays aggressive, but I think it's about playing with controlled aggression. So for me, um, look, I can't go past uh, the Seagulls here. I think the Seagulls buy plenty. Um, it's Seagulls, $1.04, Bulldogs, $11. Manly Seagulls, minus 27.5 start. I'm taking... I'm giving them 27 and a half start. I think on the back of Turbo, they're firing just nicely. Desi will be cracking the whips, and the Manly Seagulls, they're the team that in the finals can trouble some of the big sides, because they are a big side. And, and what a game to finish off with. The Panthers versus the Tigers. The game against the two big cats. I'm not sure what that was, but Two big cats going head to head, and the Tigers at the moment, they're clawless. They got beaten last week 50 points to 20 with their season on the line. I'm not sure where Madge Maguire goes with this. I know he's got some really good players in the side, but it's about digging deep. Oh, look, I think they're in for a long afternoon here. Obviously, they've got some really good players in this side, but they don't play as a team. And that's the problem with the Tigers. They play individually, and also they drop off their intensity. And when you do it to a side like the Panthers, so for the Panthers to score 25 unanswered points on a team like South, who I think had won nine or ten games in a row, mate, you've got to watch out West Tigers because the Panthers are coming. They're coming hard and fast. Obviously, we know what Burton can do in the centres, but it's on the back of their, their forward pack, their power on their forward pack. Kikia goes back to the starting side. Tavita Pengai Jr. is off the bench. Mate, what a wealth of talent there. The two big... Uh, the two big island boys there, swapping over. They play that second phase football, but also on the back of guys like Jerome Luai. And have a guess who's back. That's right. One of the people's favourites players, Brian To'o. What a year he's had. So he's back from injury now. So they got their hands full this week, the West Tigers. They're going to do it very tough. So Api Corusau will have a field day. He's playing some good football, Api Corusau. He's got his mindset. He knows what he wants to do. And I think, as I said before, if any team can beat the Melbourne Storm through that final series, I think the Panthers, because last year they were embarrassed in the grand final. It was closer than it should have been. Anyway, I have a look at the price here. Huh, no surprises here. Panthers are dollar and three. The West Tigers thirteen dollars. Where I see this being one, um, obviously the Panthers <laughs> through the middle third out wide. They got too much. They got too much talent. The Panthers are giving twenty eight and a half start, 
and I'm saying take every bit of that. So Panthers minus 28 and a half start for $1.90. That's where I'm going with it. The Panthers are going to have a field day and they're going to claw their way to victory against the Tigers and the, and the Tigers are going to be gone. Well, that's Big Dell's tips for this week. To all my PNG friends up there, you know I love my hat. And I found this little beauty. How good's this? Yes. I'm looking forward to coming up and seeing you guys in the off-season. Hopefully do some clinics and have some fun. Thanks, guys. Always good. Big Dell for PNGBet.com.